Hello, welcome to Coffee with Artists, sponsored by Art Alive. I'm your host, Samuel King Davis, and in this video series, we are going to interview artists from around the world, uh, international artists, on what their secrets are to be successful and to thrive in the field of arts. So let's do it. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Tav Falco. I met Tab while I was studying in Vienna, and I remember I was at an art opening and I heard a lot of German-speaking people around me, and I heard this distinct southern accent in the background. And I walked up to the guy, and he was definitely the best-dressed guy there. He had jet black hair, a thick southern accent, and uh, he was just... He just stood out. He just stood out among the crowd. And when I got to know the guy, I realized that for a very long time, he has been uh, way ahead of his time in the arts, uh, with music, with film, with photography. So, enjoy. Tav Falco, how you doing? I'm not so bad, Sam. Holding up. Uh, my band, Panther Burns, and I made a three-week coast-to-coast tour of USA October into November, uh -huh. and uh, gigging every night, practically, starting in New York. You know, we hit all the high spots, New York, Atlanta, Memphis, New Orleans, wow. Hot Springs, Arkansas, did, uh, Los Angeles, uh -huh. Sunset Boulevard at the Echoplex, Long Beach, California, Sacramento, uh, San Francisco. Here we are with the Command Performance album. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. looks good. Yes, this portrait was made by the photographer Via Kali. Uh-huh. So the dancer, you'll be hearing more about her. As you know, our comrade and colleague, the esteemed artist Chris Freeze of Freeze Photos, is the cinematographer on... <clears throat> The music clip. Yeah, he did a beautiful yeah. job. On one song from the new album, Command Performance, that song is He'll Have to Go. And that uh, music video clip was filmed in Vienna with the Blackmagic camera, 2.5K Blackmagic cinema camera. Yeah, it's a great video, man. It's really good. Well, thank you so much. We yeah. owe a lot to Chris Freeze for his cinematography and lighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we owe a lot, too, to Mario Monteroso, the producer of that song in Rome. Mm -hmm. In fact, we recorded the entire album in the Testaccio district of Rome. Mm -hmm. We're presenting the USA premiere of our movie, my first feature film. Urania Descending. Wow. The film was shot in 16 millimeter, black and white. Okay. Actually on FOMA film stock. Urania Descending the movie, which is an intrigue, and it begins on the banks of the Arkansas River. And there, the muse Urania, the muse of the heavens, materializes on earth in, the most, in a most unlikely form, that of a dis disaffected American girl, fed up with the strip malls and driving her BMW convertible along the riverside, fed up with the rednecks and others who continue to accost her and make her life miserable. And she sees a poster, a poster, a travel poster, in the window, in the window of a travel agency. And she goes inside and impulsively, looking at this poster with the beautiful fiacre carriage and the two wonderful, elegant horses in front of this Baroque cathedral in Vienna, pictured on the poster, she impulsively buys a one-way ticket to Mary Sinister Old Vienna. She buys a one-way ticket from the travel agent. Now you're shooting in all these places. The, the, you're traveling to these different places and shooting? Well, part one is United States, Vienna, and Lake Otter, the Atterze, uh -huh. and the Lake District of Austria. Yes, we shot in all of these places. 
everything is shot on location. Actual uh, flats, apartments, coffee houses. Great. Uh, tango salons in the uh, in the uh, Villa Paulic, colloquially known as the Klimt Villa on Lake Otter. Huh. Well, Tav, you, uh, you're so uh, prevalent. I want to showcase some people who have been professional artists and what I consider successful artists. Um, and I, I didn't even want to venture outside the field of visual arts, but when I thought of you, I realized that uh, you're not only a musician, but you're also a visual artist. You're a filmmaker. You're a photographer. There are so many things that you do uh, that you, I just couldn't pass you up. You know, I had to talk to you. I have a question. Um, You've talked a little bit about what you're doing, and and you're always you you always have a new project. You always have something new going on. So this is going to be a hard question to put in a nutshell. But in a nutshell, if you could kind of share maybe some highlights of your life experience as a creative and artistic individual, and um, some important things that you've learned along the way. Well, let me preface the answer by back backpedaling just a moment to the to the aforementioned beauty in the premiere in USA. Okay, great. Uh-huh. And now is this fly. a DVD? What is this? Okay, this is a flyer for okay. the US premiere. I see. The, at the Ron Robinson Theater this coming Thursday, the 21st of January, 2016. Oh, okay, great. Now, to say that the movie is still in premiere phases. You can go to IMDb um, website and there's a presence there for the movie. And there is a website, urantadescending-themovie.com. Okay. That. And there's a trailer for the movie also there. So film is, is part of my answer to your question. Uh-huh. Because the highlights I could point to in my modest, checkered career have to do with different parts, different aspects of my oeuvre coming together in one event. And I really enjoyed the event at Silencio for that reason in Paris, uh, that we were able to have the band in the movie on the same event. But the opening night, the premiere, uh, had Panther Burns and Urania descending. I was interested in explosive gradients when I started my work. On stage, in music, in pictures, in a special kind of way, and in, on film, but in a discreet and delicate way. So there you have, again, something that could be a cliché, delicate and explosive together, professional and amateur together. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I have, I have worked. When Marshall McLuhan mm -hmm. stated, you take two clichés and you rub them together, you have an explosion. Huh. That's what I tried to do. Because I'm a product of the 60s, of that turbulent period, the 1960s. This expansive, revolutionary, incendiary period in the postmodern development. This vision that I have, which is basically, it's basically the Orphic vision, the vision of Orpheus, whether it's in pictures, or film, or music. It's not a mystical vision. It's the vision of Orpheus. It's the vision of going down into the dark waters of the unconscious. Mm -hmm. And it's not a serious thing particularly. There's a lot of humor and fun. But it's also dark and fertile. Mm -hmm. It's where the creative imagination resides. Mm -hmm. This is where music lives, the wellsprings, the fountains 
about the wellsprings of our inspiration. It's like, it's like Jean Cocteau in Blood of a Poet. He went into the underground. That's where it is. It's in the netherworld. And this is where my work resides. Mm -hmm. um, I have another question, and this is, um, <laughs> while I'm listening to you speak, I'm thinking of how, how shallow these questions might be in light of your, your experience, but I'll, I'll give it to you anyway. Um, how can I say this uh, in light of what we just said? If you, uh, if you could maybe name, like point out three things, or even if it's one or two things that uh, you think that it has taken you in your experience to be a survivor or uh, an artist who has uh, continued to make and, and is successful in that sense that you continue to create. The audience is important. Someone once said, there can be no great poets without great audiences. Mm -hmm. But we need the audience. I play and work to an audience. Some artists work differently. Mm -hmm. But I always have the audience in mind when I'm working. I'm always thinking of how the work will be perceived. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about the perception of the viewer and the beholder. Mm -hmm. In addition to that which comes out in an internal way. Mm -hmm. Because when I talked about the Orphic vision, that also plays into expressionism. And that which is created from the interior. I work through the pers a persona. My pictures are done through a persona. Nobody's interested, really, in documentary work from me. Nobody's interested, not really from an artist. They're not interested in forensic work. They're interested in the secret eye of the artist, the subjective eye. And that's how I work. Mm -hmm. I, then I select what I have what I have seen, what I have framed, what I have beheld, then I select from all of that in terms of what I want the audience, what I would like for the audience to be exposed to, and how I want them to be exposed, how I want to present what I'm, what I'm doing, and how I want them to perceive what I would like for them to know and to feel mm -hmm. and to undergo. Mm -hmm. So. Undergo, that's a good word. Yeah, that's, that's how I work. And, and, and this movie is an example, Aranya Descending. My new album is an example of that. It's a movie made through a persona, just like my book of photographs that just came out in October. My first book of pictures. Oh, great, man. Published in Duotone. 99 photographs, an iconography of chance, 99 photographs of the Evanescent South. Wow. Distributed Looks great. Uh, it's 99 pictures, all printed in Duotone. This book I just held up is the limited cloth edition of 30 pieces. Oh, okay. Signed, signed and numbered by the artist. But this is also part of the persona I work through. Because that's what, that is really what I do as an artist, I work through a persona, a subjective vision of what I see. These books, these films, proposed films, these proposed books, my albums, my stage performance are really all the same song, you see. Uh -huh. It's all a song. The pictures are lyrical. The movie is a filmic poem. Even though it is a narrative feature, it is still a filmic poem. And the pictures, too, have poetic captions and not unfun captions that are written. Uh -huh. So what I'm getting out of that is that you, you definitely 
are considering what the audience will have to endure and what they'll have to experience and, and what their experience is going to be of what you're what you're presenting. Um, and then the second thing that I that I heard there was that you um, are are finding the same lyrical voice not uh, through your photographs, through your music, through your filmmaking. Thing is, there any one last thing that uh, out of those maybe three things that really really uh, uh, stand out to you as far as like maybe a pillar or something that you you stand by that keeps you creating and keeps you moving as an artist. Well, once you create uh, something and you release that, uh, you know, it's out of your control. From uh -huh. there. Yeah. It belongs to the world. And I and look ahead and try to frame and present what I do in the context. Mm -hmm. Frame around it, maybe. Or throw the frame away. Mm -hmm. Or put an environment around it that I envision the audience participating in that and experiencing this work in a certain way mm -hmm. that I can really control that fully. I can only look ahead. Sometimes, perhaps in the future, it will be perceived in a completely different way, and of course, that is valid. Any interpretation, any presentation, ultimately, <clears throat> is valid because it exists, and it's natural because it exists. Like Carl Jung said, any human act is natural. Mm -hmm. Carl Jung, the psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. psychologist. Um, I want to go back just for a second and say that certain milestones in my work have given me inspiration to move ahead. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to feel something internally something provocative mm -hmm. to, to create something of interest. You can call it inspiration, you can call it compulsion, you can call it um, obsession, whatever. But there has to be, like music, pure emotion. Music is an expression of pure emotion and time and space and thought. So mm -hmm. it has to come from the inside. Mm -hmm. You can learn how to technically produce music. You can learn how to do that. You can learn how to draw. You can learn how to use a camera. But you can't learn how to feel something. Mm -hmm. So going back, there was one milestone two-thirds of the way into my work, into my career. And it was an invitation to go to Mallorca. I didn't solicit this, but it came about through a process of association in Paris, where I lived for four years. I was invited by the Juan Moreau Foundation and Phone Art in Mallorca to present my photographs for the first time. They asked me to collect my photographs. I collected 50 pictures of my work. The new book is 99 pictures, 99 photographs and iconography of chance in Mallorca. We did 50 photographs and iconography of chance. They printed my pictures, they framed them, and they exhibited them. Then, on the same event, they asked me to bring my short films to Mallorca which have been archived by the Cinémathèque Française in Paris in the permanent collection. We put together a programmation of my short films and they were screened in the auditorium cinema of the Juan Moreau Foundation in Mallorca. Wow. In presence. And I spoke about the films and this was in 2009 before the making of my first feature movie Urania descending. Uh -huh. So my short films were shown. My photographs were shown. And then, in the theater, in the center of Mallorca, my band Panther Burns was invited to make a concert. All of this played in the same song 
a shared song in film, on stage, in still photographs, came together in one exhibition, event, performance. And that for me, Sam, was a, was a milestone for me in my work, in my collaborators, in my colleagues, because mm -hmm. I can't do this work alone. I have uh, one last question for you and then we can wrap up and I'll collect uh, the info from you so we can make sure that all the viewers that are watching this can and check out your book and your film and, and, and everything. Um, the last question is, um, what is your message to the person? It doesn't have to be a young artist, but oftentimes it is, uh, who know that they're artists and they know that they want to move forward, but they have some reservations and they're a bit unsure of what to expect. Uh, do you have a message to the young artist? Do you have a message to the, the artists that are, you know, that they don't have to be young. They can just be someone who's known their whole lives that they're an artist and they just never pursued it and they, they feel like they're ready. What, what do you have to say to them? Expect nothing. Do your work, but expect nothing. If you expect too much, you get nothing. That can happen. You persevere. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going to. So, doesn't matter if you win or lose. Doesn't matter. Because you can win on your own terms. And a winner never quits, and a quitter never wins. So ultimately, it doesn't matter if you win and lose. Work on your own terms. Great. That's that's great. That's a great way to wrap it up, man. That's. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for your time, and thank you. Uh, Thank you for your contribution to the creative community and the the world at large and the universe and really you gotta you got it man you got a vibe you got a you got a voice you got a message and it's 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 burning. Well, art alive is where it's at. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So thanks for sticking with us. Uh, please subscribe below. We're going to have a lot more great interviews with artists from around the globe that will uh, share their experience with you and some of their tips and secrets on really what it takes to be a professional and successful artist. Thanks for watching.